more or nothing. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of More or Nothing with Ryan and, and potentially with Max. Potentially with Max. Unbelievable. It's happened again. Like, honestly, what? Okay, let's just quickly start, right, for the, how, how this sort of unfolded. Because remember last week, after we finished the podcast recording, we sat down and we said, listen, guys, why don't we do it next week at nine o'clock UK time? It'll be three or four o'clock in the afternoon when I'm in Hong Kong. It'll all work perfectly. That was the plan, wasn't it, Mark? Everyone Absolutely agrees. Was. This morning, I have the worst hangover on earth and we'll get onto that so i'm grinding it out i'm trying to get to three o'clock to do the podcast and max just comes in and says oh sorry boys can't make nine o'clock and we haven't heard from him since he's not even applied he's not come in with anything no excuses nothing i think we basically sort of worked out that he's just gonna turn up if he turns up and if he doesn't he doesn't i think he i think our dearest max which one will turn up mate i think he will just at the time where we're losing the energy that you are still somehow hoarding at what midnight, quarter to midnight in Hong Kong. So yeah, mate, it's what quarter to twelve in Hong Kong. He is going to come in just when we need him to, just when the energy levels. You know, I've been skiing all day. I'm a bit. I've got a bit. I mean, I got. I'm all right. Glass of rosé and a beer. Yeah, the double but, parts. I, I'm just I'm going. strictly on water. I, I, yeah, I have. There's, there's not going to be much energy for me. I'll be honest. I've managed to find my way to the end of the day. I just wanted today, today to be over with. I just didn't want to be. Oh, Hong Kong got me last night, Mark. Hong Kong got me Mate, last night. I need, I need to. Okay, so we need to go through this in a certain, I guess, chronological way because I have, you know, I've lived part of your experience both on video calls that you probably won't remember. Um, you will remember today's one because you know. You you were you were pretty down. You were pretty down, and I had a similar sort of video call with my brother, uh, who was also pretty down today. There, there was, uh, and what was great is I had those exact same video calls the previous night where you guys were pretty up. You were pretty up. So you know, do what do you want to start with today's down, or do you want to no? Take us through, okay? Take us through the whole because it's been a a mad week for you. You have been uh, in talk us through from actually an amazing match. Not as much for you, but you know there was there was a lot of emotions running through on Friday night when you were at the stoop for Harlequins versus Glasgow. That's where our adventure begins. Right. Okay. Well, let's start from there then, shall we? God, that feels that feels like about three weeks ago, but it wasn't. It was a few days ago. Yeah, down to London on on Friday for the uh, the Quins versus Glasgow match. Oh, God, it was a tough one because I was obviously. I was giving it big licks before. I was with Hugo Monnier, who obviously Quinn's through and through. I'm glad to go through and through. So we're giving it to each other back and forth before. He's giving it the old eye. Oh, it's nice you boys just to sort of turn up. You know, the, the boys are down in London for a little night out. Are they? Then there's no chance of winning. So I'm giving it back hard. Even on the TV, I'm saying, you know, we're going to do the job. I've had at least smack talking. We'll see who's laughing after. But yeah, the boys haven't managed to get it done. And we'll get onto the rugby side of things in a bit, won't we? But um, I've then done that game, gone to Heathrow Airport. I've slept in, in a hotel in Heathrow, not on the floor. When I said this to a few people, they're like, what, so you slept in the terminal like, like um, Tom Hanks? I was like, no, 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 I actually slept in the room. But I didn't get to bed. I had a few beers with the boys after, so I wasn't in bed till about half two. And then I was up at six, flight cancelled to Amsterdam. So I was like, hold on a minute. I was meant to be flying Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Hong Kong. Flight cancelled. So complete panic. Turn up at the airport. I'm like, what am I going to do? Have to rebook flights direct from Heathrow. So I get over to Terminal 3. But th and and they, I've got to do this. A massive thanks to Cathay Pacific because they have hooked me up like you wouldn't believe. I had my flights, but they upgraded me in return for a little bit of content. <laughs> Someone. Great content, mate. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. Oh, well, do you know the content I might do on the way back? I might just, I might just see how many drinks I can drink on the way back, and just try and do the whole cocktail list and film myself slowly getting more and more pissed. But anyway, um, incredible uh, business class flight with Cafe. So I did get a good night's sleep finally. Well, it was the afternoon, um, but I managed to sleep 
pretty much six hours straight to Hong Kong. Where I land, I arrive at 8.30 in the morning for the Hong Kong, the, the final day, the Sunday, the sevens, the final day. And I'm straight into it. Like, there's not, nothing about it. I am literally straight in, get a shower at Barks' room, me and him head straight down, grab a bit of food, and we're straight into it. And, oh, like, the people I've seen, the people I've been with, it's crazy. Absolutely. Like, David James was there because it was sponsored by Colesburg. So, hey, David Jamo, James. I, you know, I met, I, 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 I know James. I worked with him for years. We did Champions League football in, like, India for, like, four years <laughs> together. Yeah, what a lovely bloke, eh? Hey? So, yeah. We, lovely, um, lovely guy. And then uh, it just all, yeah, sort of went downhill from there. I, um, I was, I was filming content, social media content. I'm out here working, and that's what I did tell you. I am working for the Hong Kong Tourism Board this week, um, doing some. Who content. we love I, as well. We do uh, love the gang at the Hong Kong Tourism and dis- Board. Hey, go and check them out at Discover Hong Kong. Um, I love it, Mark. I absolutely love Hong Kong. It's been it's been pretty cool today, just having a little look around. But I've not get to see much yet. And then, obviously, I met your brother like halfway through the day yesterday. Um, we we met up, had a few beers, and uh, yeah, things got a little bit blurry. But we were in the director's box. Um, we were basically with the bloke that I think is like the main man of HSBC. Or cafe, yeah. I can't remember. No, um, it's cat. He was uh, the swat. I think he. He he runs uh, Cafe, but for Swire, he's incredibly high up at Swire, I think, who own Cafe Pacific. Whoever, mate, it's a, it's a grande queso, big cheese, whichever way round it was. But hilariously, as well, Gareth had no idea. Like, you're both in there, and he, his stories are, uh, Gareth's stories have been quite funny about it. It was just so funny, because the two of you are effectively just like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can, just blagging so hard but but doing a great job at the same time um and i think it was uh it was it was very very enjoyable but they're mate those are they're they're they're, they're, they're big fish out in Hong well Kong. we were in there so yeah in there with shawzy simon shaw um Dwayne vermoulin was with him uh, like everyone and anyone now uh, brian Driscoll was out here caught up saw matt gitto um those boys were over uh jamie roberts was here james haskell and all those lot tyndall I just wish you boys could have been here with me. It would have been a lot nicer than, than being on my own. But um, I, there's a hilarious photo that Bart's put up, and some people might that follow me um, have seen this one. But I've been given a media vest, right? So my, my, my pass is media. I can get down into the tunnel. I actually wasn't meant to be in the tunnel, but I went down into the tunnel. Um, for like, I walked out behind the Aussies and the Kiwis as they were going out to play their semi-final match with my little camera. <laughs> walking behind them and then i got grabbed and they're like get him out of there what's that bloke doing in there i'm just walking up the tunnel um but this picture sums it all up that one from barks where he's got a picture of some bloke with a giant camera next saying real photographer and then me not a real photographer looks like you've just got your little iphone 6 just taking a photo but i'm telling you now the fijian following has gone through the roof i am not Ryan Wilson, the ex rugby player, and all. I am really sunny. Even one of the Kiwi boys, even one of the uh, the All Black Sevens players, turned around and I was like doing a bit of filming. I was like, "Oh fuck, that's it, bro! From you're the bloke from TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you're the Fijian really guy from TikTok. Sonny. Really sunny. Oh, so nah, it was it was a good day. It was a good day, I think, and I think it was a good night. But I can't really remember much. It was all a bit blurry. But I am dusty as hell today. Your brother, I had him in the media vest at the end, and he was on the pitch pretending to be media. <laughs> he was just saying it was like the most, because he was lashed as well. So he was like, so funny. No, no, not you. Sorry, we're media. Like giving it all the big ones, going through, like going, talking to all these oh, like, players man. and everything. He is literally your, like a copy of you as well. It's so funny. It's like just sitting talking to you. So, um, yeah, we're out on the, boat though, we're out the junk boat tomorrow. So, looking forward to that. So, keep an eye on the content. And, like I said, Hong Kong Tourism Board. Thank you very much. And then Cafe Pacific. I hope that'll grow me on the way home. <laughs> oh, Maybe, it, look, it, looks, it looks sweet. Am I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we're in, um, we're at Club Med in Alp Duez. It's very nice. I feel like I've made it. I thank my wife, my lucky stars again. Uh, it's um, you know, you say like your my brother's like basically me, but not, one of our best friends was actually like, yeah, he's he's you if you worked hard in your thirties. <laughs> I was like, great, cheers. Don't be um, silly, Mark. 
really. Nah, what else do you want to know about Hong Kong? Um, yeah, talk us through because it looked like it was um, tournament itself. I mean, mate, as an experience, right? Did you get into the South Stand? Did you see the 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 the, the sheer volume of oh of God. fancy dress in one single place? It's it is carnage, isn't it? Like it's everything I expected it to be, and obviously that's the last year it's going to be played at at the iconic stadium, the old stadium, because they're moving it out of the city. But you can, from where I am in um, the Parkland Hotel, I'll just sort of walk up the road. It's a five minute walk. You walk in, and it's it is just part a uh, party atmosphere right from the beginning. The music pumping. There's families, but then you get into the South Stand, and yes, I watched the final in the South Stand. So by the time by that time, it was heaving. Everyone in their fancy dress. Um, and watched the final up in there, and it oh mate, it was so good, it was so good. But all, all accounts though, the Saturday because obviously everyone works on a Monday, so Sunday they don't go as hard. But from what I'm hearing, like it was a five hour queue or something, five hour waiting to get into the South Stand. They do one in, one out, one in, one out. Right. You, um, you get and in, you piss where you stand, you piss where you stand. So yeah. people are pissing in cups, throwing the cups down the thing, like just mental. But they do it right. Like if if there was anything, and I. And we'll probably, I think we're tagging on the end of this, um, the interview I did with Charlotte Caslick this morning. Oh, such a bad hangover. I barely remember doing it because I think I was still drunk. But I did the interview with Charlotte um, and I interviewed uh, GB7's captain, Robbie Ferguson, as well. And like talking to them. Charlotte's the Australian, uh, just for people who don't know, is the Australian captain for the the women's. And so we were saying like 15s. You know, if there's anything they could learn from sevens, it is like trying to make every weekend a weekend like that. And like there is there is ways to do it. Like down at the stoop, honestly, Friday night, I had another one of those moments, Mark. I was stood right there as the boys coming out, Champions Cup, theme music, boys coming out together. You know, things like that. Like I think they should just bring the teams out. Even small little things like that. Let the teams come out together every time. It just I don't know, just, then you get both sets of fans going mental. So it's like a bigger it's a bigger thing. You know, little things like that and just everything about this weekend, you've just got to look at it and go, that is awesome. But yeah, at the stoop, when the boys ran out, I was like, just stood there watching, being like, oh, fuck, I missed that. I wish I was out there doing that because it was an incredible atmosphere down at the stoop. It was pretty cool. So yeah, I've had a busy old weekend, haven't I? A busy old week. Yeah, but mate, you say the Sunday because I've done it many, many times, the sevens. It's my favourite thing. It genuinely is. In fact, it was supposed to be my 40th like celebrations but covid hit through um but the sunday yeah maybe people don't go as hard but that is the day and i have been at the proper receiving end of this that is the day every non-rugby player becomes just a gray man in the stands because in the south stand all the players come into the south stand so if if you've brought uh, i'd like just broken up with like my ex-girlfriend this is like 15 20 years ago just broken up my ex-girlfriend. I was like booing. I loved this, all this stuff. And <laughs> literally, I was there with her and her friends, still like trying so hard, being pathetic. And just got rugby players just coming in. I'll have that one, that one. You're just like, oh, this is this is low. This is boring. This is bad. <laughs> Mate, so, hey, how cool is that? Like, and again, like you said, after every game they go and they do, they go the whole way around the stadium, signing autographs, taking photos, all the players. They like you said, they get into the they go and see their mates, they go into the South Stand. Like that is so good. Like the connection between the fans and the players. Like all, and like I said, there's something for everyone there. So uh, it's oh so good. I've got man. a real I question like... for you, Will Stay. I, I need to know the, the oh, truth no, belong what? to this. There will be a moment where the entire stadium started singing Stand Up If You Hate the French. Did you stand up? Do I you don't not remember it. No, I don't I don't remember that bit. I don't know. Okay. I don't remember that. Like I interviewed a few people. I, I interviewed Barks at one point. Oh, that's it. the final was New Zealand France. So they sung because they sung the the anthems, um, and obviously New Zealand won. Um, but no, I didn't. They never did that. But like it's funny because you talk. I did a quick thing with Barks. I was like, you know, most memorable thing. We're doing some quick fire stuff, and I was like, most memorable thing. You know, rugby moment this weekend is like, mate, I haven't watched any rugby. <laughs> I've literally just been on the piss. It's like they say that when you get bored, then you turn around and watch the rugby after after partying. So, who was the halftime entertainment? Who was the big? Was there a big show? Oh no, because that would have been on the Saturday. Actually, uh, you don't remember, mate. No, the, mate those, you know the twins, the Weasley brothers, Ron Weasley. Yeah, 
You know Ron Weasley? You know the older brothers? Mate, they were here. They were, one of them was dressed as a dinosaur and they're like, they were, they were on the pitch doing stuff at, on the pitch. <laughs> what the fuck are they doing? Okay, but what was the best costume you saw? Oh. I had to be, well, for me, it was the Fijian. There was a Fijian fella there with his proper welly boots on. He was in his gum boots, kicking about like he was, he was back on the farm. Um, oh, mate, there were so many. Wonder Woman, she was up there. Um, oh, yeah. The ones where every, <laughs> everyone dresses the same, eh? Like there's like a, like a massive group of flamingos. And there's a, there's a place here, right, that you go and get all your, your fancy yeah, dress. Yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. It's Stanley Market, sure. And they, um, um, I'll tell but you, yeah, the, those, the, the, uh, the Aussie boys, Matt Gitter and that, they, they did a pretty good job of uh, dressing up. I saw some photos of them on, on the Saturday. So they'd be They're out sexy there, ladies, weren't they? What were they? Lely sexy ladies. Yeah. Um, but nah, no but fancy yeah. dress for me. Just uh, strictly business. I was media, mate. That was, my, that was my fancy dress. That is the worst was when I... So we had a call from... My brother being like, have you, have you heard from Ryan? We're like trying to like, you. he was so pissed. And we're like, we're trying to meet up. And then you then video called. And obviously we're being driven to Heathrow to fly, to fly off to go skiing. So in the car is my father-in-law, the kids, Lou, myself. And um, it's just so funny because you're just, you, you are, I'm like, mate, have you had a good time in Hong Kong? You're like, mate, uh, it's, it's work. And you're so hammered. I'm like, is it work? I mean, is it really work? Right, let's let's actually turn our attention to the rugby. Max will be joining us. I believe it. I'm going to manifest it. <laughs> he can't not. He said. He said. But let's Max. start with Glasgow then, because that was the first one. What a weekend of Champions Cup rugby! It's and what the best thing about it, and I hope Max does come here. I'm pretty sure we got one out of all the <laughs> all the awful, games. Right? Awful, <laughs> quite awful. <laughs> You should be used by Paddy Power if they're wondering which way to go. And then they, you would just go, oh, okay, so they've said that. We'll go the opposite. And then you, how, you guys would be clairvoyant. So good. So good how bad it was. Right. So we start. let's start with Friday then. Obviously, Harlequins, Glasgow. It's hard because I, was doing, I was, wasn't doing commentary. Uh, I was working for TNT, who... We'll talk about in a minute of just taking over the uh, the uh, autumn tests, um, but I was working for TNT, so I was only doing the comms. So you don't actually, you, you're not as engaged in the game as you are when you're commentating. So I quite like it when I do the, do the punditry stuff, then jump up into the box and do the commentary because you're really focused in on the game. Um, you were just pitch lot, side, right? That's all you were doing. Just pitch side. So before half time and, and after the game, so doing like interviews and stuff and. I quite interestingly interviewed Danny Wilson after the game, who was trying to pretend that he didn't have extra motive after being obviously pushed out of Glasgow Warriors um, a couple of years ago before Franco Smith came in. And I'm like, Danny, mate, come on. Don't and like, he came in after the, the, the interview afterwards. He was like, no, 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 it's great. And, yeah, and, and I was like, listen, come on. It must have felt a little bit, you know, it must have felt pretty good. He was like, yeah, I'm not going to lie, I felt good. But Wait, what's, he, what's he at Quinn's now? He's now the head coach, head coach of Quinn's. I thought Tab over there as he left. No, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I'm not too sure what's going on there, but no, because no, that, that's is... that's quite new, isn't it? It's a bit weird. Yeah, well, I don't think it was ever announced either. That's the in other hey. interesting thing. And so I got this run sheet, and it said Danny Wilson, head coach, and I sort of pretended I knew that that had happened. But then <laughs> someone afterwards said, "When did he become head coach?" And I was like, "Yeah, exactly what I thought." So it's all gone um, quite quiet over there, but. Uh, the referee, by all accounts, the first half was absolutely shocking. We're not going to blame the referees again, but shocking. Um, and Glasgow gave away a lot of penalties. I think the penalty count was something stupid, like 12, 12 to nothing in the first half. In the first 30 minutes, let alone the first half, you don't want to give more than 10 away in a whole game. So they put themselves under pressure um, and just left it a bit late. But they did... Come back. They did nearly come back. And I thought, this is it. They're going to win. They're going to pull it out. And they went in front. Oh, God. Um, I was so excited. I was buzzing. And then, uh, and then Marcus Smith on the day, he, he was different gravy. He, uh, he controlled the game really well. And Quinn's first time of winning a knockout game. But, but it's not a quarterfinal. 
This is the other thing. It's around the 16, and everyone's like, oh, it's the first time they've ever qualified in, in but you it know, used one of the finals, right? It used to be quarterfinals. So it's not yeah. really the same. But then again, when you're on TV, you can't then bag it, can you? And be like, well, it's not a quarterfinal. So you should have bagged it pre, but you can't bag it post when everyone knows you, you're, you know, cut you and he bleeds Glasgow. You're like, eh. <sighs> and then we didn't want it anyway. It, yeah, it just makes well, you look a bit, uh, a bit shitty. Also, harsh, mate. Uh, Ugo Monier got you really bad with the old celebrations at the end, and then and then it just pans round to you, and you just I'm like, oh, he's having a shit time. Yeah, no, nah, it was brutal. It was brutal. But that, listen, I don't think I, they they did ask me after the game and said who uh, you know which game are you looking forward to most this weekend across the whole weekend, and I, and I then said, oh, I'm looking forward to the Bordeaux game. I hope Bordeaux win as well because there's no chance Quinns will go down there and win. <laughs> they were like bitter much. <laughs> So that Bordeaux did do that. Fucking yeah, to be fair, Bordeaux, oh, there's no way that Quinns will be going down there and, and doing the job on them. They're just so inconsistent. Like it, it, the fact that they went so far ahead against Glasgow and then just let them back into the game. We've seen that over the last few weeks. What they did with Bath, where they ran away with it, and then Bath nearly came back in and won. Um, obviously, got hammering done by Sarri. So you think if Bordeaux have just done that to Saracens, who put fifty points on Quinns? I mean. My predictions are pretty shit, but I'm predicting that Bordeaux do the job at home in, in the quarterfinals there. Fair play, fair play. But, um, just to finish off with that, Quinn's Glasgow, did you feel that it was a fair result? Mm, nah, nah, not really. I think Glasgow in the second half controlled the game completely. They just let themselves down and... And all the stuff I was sort of getting were, you know, I was getting a lot of messages afterwards saying, why did you not call the ref out? And I'm like, fuck it, I call the ref out on air, but I can't do it live on TV. Um, and I don't know, I think they were hard done by maybe in the first half by the ref. Um, and things didn't really go their way, but they deserved it in the second half and they put themselves in front. Um, but like I said, it was Mark Smith. He played well, to be fair to him. He played well. He has the ball on the string, kicking game, outstanding. So... Um, yeah, interesting. It was funny afterwards interviewing me and Hugo, interviewing people on the pitch who sort of do the roaming stuff. And Danny Kerr comes over and he's like, "Oh, it's like having twenty five of this bloke on the pitch about me." Um, <laughs> he was like, oh, well, yeah, just giving it constantly." Um, but it was Hugo asked him before the game. He's like, "Oh, listen, can we get a little exclusive? Like, are you staying at Quinns?" And he was like, "Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'll confirm." <laughs> Told him there and then that he confirmed that he was he was staying on at Quinns. So. There you have it, Danny Kerr sticking oh, around. I didn't hear that. So he is, he is, he's staying. Yeah, 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 sticking around at Quinn's. So, oh, that's amazing. I hope he gets loads of money for that because I'm always like, you know, go and get a couple of final years in France. You know, anyway, fair play. Um, yeah, just for those who didn't see, there's there was an interesting stat that Glasgow beat 23 defenders to Quinn's eight. <laughs> they have it. Yeah, no, they they did. They played well. They played well in patches, and but. Again, like we said with Scotland, they left it too late and uh, they sort of made their own bid with the amount of penalties they gave, uh, gave away in the first half. So, yeah, fair play to Quinns. They go through to the quarters, but you can't see them going any further than that. Uh, let's go to well, what I felt was the, was, was the big one. Uh, we had talked it up a bit, because probably because of the result, but also because of the teams involved. Stormers versus La Rochelle. The only away win all weekend. Uh, it felt like, I mean, how, you know, that is, La Rochelle just don't, don't give up, do they? And that is a, that you've been, to, you've played at the Storm, against the Stormers. You've played over there. It is a incredibly tough place to go and get a result, right? Oh, man, what a game as well. Like Stormers running away with this at 17, I think it was 17 nil or something at one point. And you're like, this is it. They, they, they're definitely doing the job here. Um, oh, like Manny Libok, obviously, we'll get on to the last bit. Um, I'll try and keep it in order. But Damien Willemsa, I reckon he's one of my, my favourite players out there at the moment. Like, he just tries stuff and it comes off, but it's not stupid stuff. Like, the little yeah, because out Because he's your new best off. friend, mate. Yeah, just because he I'm really good mates with him. Mate, he is class, though. He is absolute class. Um, Jalant as well, was, was incredible. But... Like you said, La Rochelle just finding a way to get back into it. And in the European Cup, they've got a pedigree, haven't they? And they, uh, and they found a way to get back in. And you just thought 
you just, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a phone call from Max Laheef. I'm getting a phone call from Max Laheef. Put him on speaker, speak speaker now. Big boy. Hey, bro, sorry. Just got back from, I'm just out of training. Just driving home. What, what, mate, what happened? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. What happened? It was an hour and ten minutes ago. I thought it was, I thought what you were saying was tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck off, are you joking? Oh, for fuck's sake, genuine. Mate, we've... I'm having a fucking bear. Um, <laughs> I'm like 20 minutes away. 20 minutes away. Lads, how oh, good. I made it. Nah, nah. I thought it was tomorrow. Lads, I genuinely... Why did I think it was tomorrow? Was that ever discussed in the group? Did I just make that up? So I just jumped to that leap of logic. Do you ever, like... Do you ever, like, turn, at a rug turn up at rugby a day... After you're meant to be there and be like, oh shit, sorry, Pat, I thought it was tomorrow. I've probably done that. Probably. I, I, I kid you not. Oh, uh, you've missed, you've missed the, the, you've missed it, Max. I'm not telling you anything that's happened. I, listen, I am in a hole right now. I am in a serious hole. It's half twelve. I barely slept. Oh, that's not that bad. You wait. You've had all night as your whole career, mate. I've I've been up interviewing people today I interviewed Charlotte Cashlick did some stuff with the GB guys that's why I said I bumped into Tom Homer's younger brother who plays for GB lovely. Great he's Great a lovely man. bloke eh? so they were oh. they were very dusty as well so it actually made me feel better when I got to the GB Sevens team hotel because they were all written off as well boys I, I went to their hotel the Kerry heard of that Mark yeah, yeah it's very good very, very good posh hotel. And I just pretended I was one of the sevens players. So just went up and they were, it was like the buffet was next level. And uh, so went up and just pretended I was playing, playing sevens and just sat in there with all the, all the Kiwis, all the Fijians were in there. It was fucking pretty cool. So yeah. Anyway, Max, thank you for joining us just at the moment that we need you for the rugby chat, but you all good, mate? Oh man, I'm great. I'm, I'm glorious. Um, busy, busy week off. No, not really. Just chilled. Um, Hold on, weekend. it's your week off. Last week was a week off. This week we're back. Fucking <laughs> hell, I was going to say that. That's why we have got back. Um, you know how it is. It's that time of year. It's all like, oh, it's all busy. You know how it is. Looking for another job. Year on year, Connie's. It's all stressful. How's it looking? Where, where are we at? Come on. Can you, can you give anything away or not? Or would you rather not? Uh, I don't know if I should, but. It's, we should be okay. We'll we'll be employed. Don't worry, lads. We'll be employed. I'll still I'll still be a I'll still be a pro rugby player this time next year. And what's happening is are there some? I mean, there were a few things. Ha there seems to be a few. There's people. a few, but I, I, it'd be nice to get some. Yeah, more, more, some more offers. But we'll see. It's a, it's a strange market right now, boys. Rugby's on its knees, and uh, obviously I can't go to France because my uh, my neck, unless I get elective spinal surgery, sadly. So I thought you said you were going in for when we were chatting about it before not actually on the pod, but that you could get the exemption if you get re, if you see another uh, specialist again. Yeah. But I think that's, it's, it's based on the, the, the type of surgery. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Um, um, yeah. Well, Max is, is thank you for joining us. Well, it's a, it's a really privileged to have you here because uh, oh, mate, we're just about to talk always. code and, I'm, oh, well, we actually, okay. I've yeah, but Max, just so you know, Ryan has had a whirlwind time for flights cancelled, then upgraded onto business, then straight out in Hong Kong. Then it turns out that uh, his it's 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 cross it's he's it works in every single geography. The Ryan Wilson approach to life. He is. Yeah, I mate. Mean, he's, he's a cat. He'll always land on his feet, and he's having the best time of his life. Don't make it out like this is some kind of labour. You are living the dream. This is literally your dream right now. <sighs> Tell the missus that she's raging. Oh no! Of course she's raging. That's understandable. But mate, he was on elite. My brother said uh, it was. It was. He called it elite networking, and I went like blagging, and he was like, "Well, yeah, but it was like elite." Like they ended up in like some math, like big dogs box, you know, all this stuff, <sighs> chatting, all this stuff to, I mean, it's just nonstop. And I think he's seen every single per, every single rugby player that was at the sevens has, has been Will, Willie Sonied. Put it this way, boys, without a shadow of a doubt, we will be working 
at the Hong Kong Sevens next year. I've put in the labour. I've put in the graft for us as a team. I have come here and done what I needed to do for us as more or nothing. And we will be here next year in the new stadium, fancy dress, Mark in a skirt, sexy little Asian thing. It will be. It will be. It will be. No, it will be. Yeah, yeah. And maybe a little dog lead and a collar, but that's I am. I, I am. I'm telling you now, we're coming out here. It's going to be. I. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So, Max, wherever you work into your next contract, can you just make sure you get this week off, please? <laughs> what? What? A break clause. Uh, a sevens break clause in his contract. Otherwise, I'm not signing. Imagine. Oh. I caught up with Hoops today as well. Saw Hoops. He was telling me how tough he's finding it. And it's just a different game. So I saw him as well. Boys, it's been fucking wonderful. It has. It really has. Is he fight? Wait, what did he say? Is it like just, it's just more the, more the fitness levels rather than the, because he's got yeah. the requisite skill level, but. He, he said it's another level. And not just on that. And you'll hear later on in the Charlotte Catholic interview um, that. He he's picking her brains because she's obviously been in around the game for for ages and she she knows it inside out. But it's it's not just that. It's like the travel thing. You're flying, jet lag, all that sort of stuff, week in week out. And in 20 days they play again in Singapore, so a lot of them are flying back home, train again, then fly out, and you've got to deal with the jet lag and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's plenty to go with it. But um, he's uh yeah, I think he's enjoying it. He's think he's enjoying. Isn't that it. interesting though that Dupont found it? He, he sort of straight away dominated in his sort of first tournament. Yeah, that is just really. That's cool. just yeah. That's just again it, exemplifies. It'd be, it'd be, yeah. yeah, I wonder what his experience of it was like. I wonder if he found it difficult. But yeah. Oh well, I'll tell you what. The, this humidity yesterday. There was one thing. I, I mean, I was keeping well hydrated. You do not have to worry about that. I was making sure I was oh, at the yeah. top of my hydration. Um, and there's no way I could play rugby in that <laughs> or play sevens. Fucking tough old shit. Yeah. But where were we? We've talked about the Glasgow game, Max. We've talked about the. Fact- oh, mate! I felt so bad for you. You must have been absolutely fuming was. with that ref were you fuming thank you thank you the referee yeah. talk to me you were talk fuming. to me about the ref it was a bit well first off a bit all over the place wasn't it yeah Glasgow were getting pinged off the park um, but it was that try that Quinn's try that wasn't uh, that was a bit funky wasn't it that smelt odd. Yeah, but again, Didn't... we don't get enough close-ups and stuff like that. But yeah, that was something that people were kicking off about. And, you know, that was a bit dubious. It's interesting. But... Yeah. I, I thought Glasgow wanted it more, genuinely. Watching the game, I thought Glasgow were going to win it. But at, at the end there, they came unstuck. And um, Quinns had that, that more that Riley sort of capitalised upon <sighs> and got them, got them out of it. Yeah, it was a tough day. So we've chatted about that. We've chatted day. about how the, the fact that I've got, I think I got... 95% of the uh, results wrong. We, we've had our, our Midas touch the opposite. No, 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 wait. We did all right, didn't nah. we? We got Larry Bell. We got, no, we I got see, I see Stormers. Right. He said, hey, Will said Stormers. Did you say Stormers? I was pretty I said sure Larry I said Sarries. Okay, yeah. I said Glasgow. Yeah, I think, no, no, no. I remember I said, no, I said Sarries. You said Bordeaux. And then we were, and then at the end, I was like, yeah, I want to change that. And you're like, nah, you can't change it. Oh, okay, but yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right, what game are we moving on to next then, Mark? Because we've chatted. Well, one that both of you absolutely did not remotely call. And I know there's a there's a really, really big battery of all that's chucked oh. in here. But Exeter beating Bath. Yes, but yes, the, the finless Bath. Ooh, interesting. Is that the ver- is that the variable? Is that unfair on Exeter? Is that also unfair in a way on Bath? Uh, you know, what, what... <sighs> it was a t- it was it was it was a very tight game. I thought it was really good, really good game. Um, but I felt like Bath were going to get on top of them, especially up front. Like the scrum was going well. Like Benner was up on Aaron Painter, um, Ted Hill with that freakish display of athleticism. Did you see that? What? Takes the takes the box kick. And just runs the length. He's got Faye Uboso and Hodge chasing him, and they're not even gaining. A it's unbelievable. Faye uboso has got he's got he's got concrete boots on. And you're like, how is this happening? Because Ted Hill's going somewhere. Nah. I'm not saying he's yeah. bloody hell. Yeah. Ted Hill's that guy. He is that guy though. He is the he's a size experiment. Like it's just because he's been injured all season, so we haven't haven't got to see see as many many physical talents. But um, yeah, he's. What whilst we're on Faye Uboso, can we just? How he doesn't look big. I don't know, Max. You've come up against no, no, him. Nah, he, he is. is big. 
He's got a bro, set, of, he's set of pins on him. He is bro, he's he's thick. Machine. He's thick. Thick. But he's how does the Tomine contact thick. every single time? You're like Yeah, but you look at you look at how he runs, right? The minute he drops into contact, his knee's about a nanometer from the floor. Like his the way he can like run at that level. He runs so close to the ground and he just doesn't doesn't drop any speed. And pairing that with his like ability to create force. He's just a real nightmare. It is interesting watching him beat defenders because he doesn't really use much evasion. He just sort of backs his horsepower <laughs> and does a job with his with his freakish biomechanics. Um mate, what a game. I did yeah. not see that coming though, eh? I did not see Yeah, no, no, same. I'm with you. I I was like, ah, but I forgot this, but fair play to Exeter. Gritty stuff from the men in black. I know I know there was I know there was a message asking me to try and get the update on Finn. I haven't because I've been preoccupied. Um but if he's out for for a wee while, that is a big old loss. That does put a dent. And it it sounds pretty thick away, eh? us going, Oh, they well then they're nothing without Finn. Like they've obviously got some superstars in there, but are they the same? Well we'll see. I just think they're gonna struggle. Well, guys, don't little. forget we had a, a very nice viral clip from our Christmas dinner with Finn, Cam, Redpath, and <laughs> and Ollie Lawrence, where it's like, what's the difference this season? And Finn's like, <laughs> but then no one argued it. And you look at it and you're like, well, I don't know. I mean, let's hope not. We do want Bath to, 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 to continue to make He's healthy as well, because he also, he also had a sort of a scare, injury scare there. So, but yeah, I thought there was still, there was guys playing well, though, like, um, Tommy did toy continuing his prolific sky uh, try scoring form. He he played very well. Um, obviously Ted Hill, man, they got they got plenty of talent. They just need to find a way. Just probably become more more forward orientated and just put it on put it on the backs of them. Right. Well, let's. I mean, look. It's to be fair, credit where it's credits due, fellas. Right. You didn't call it, but he still had to be. You know, as we said, Bath do have superstars all all across the pitch and you know chiefs are a young side so but chiefs chiefs yeah let's be honest like roots puts hand up this allow rest to to Ema, like the guys have been doing a job all season and we're playing very well so mate fair play to them. really really good result but let's quickly touch back on that stormers la rochelle game uh, max ryan and i had a, a little word about it and and how how in a way did la rochelle manage to keep themselves in the game. I mean, they were down on the scoreboard by quite a lot and yet somehow they never seem to be out and it's it's a hell of a difficult place as Ryan was telling us to go uh, and to go and win at Stormers. I think he just like, I think it was interesting seeing how um, Rog just kept kept the guys he's backed all his time there. He's kept them all on for like 80, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure Antonio played a lot longer than normal. Um, Big Will Skelton had a strong game. Uh, Obviously, Gregory Aldrich, Carl Urban, Billy Butcher, he he, he dominated. Um, but yeah, it was, man, it was always going to be tight. I mean, the first half, like, Larishal didn't look like they were up to much at all. Um, all my Stormers had to capitalise more on that because uh, you just knew it was something was going to come at some point. Uh, LeBoc obviously had a strong game. Felt so bad for him again at the oh, end. Oh, no, that, that kick that at kill. the end. Do you know what I mean? That's that's gonna start to haunt. But it was almost yeah, a repeat it's... of the game in December, wasn't it? Yeah. So like, yeah, it's a toughie. Yeah, it's but where toughie. do you boys? You've been in that position. Not not. You certainly haven't been in the position that he was actually in. But I mean, you've been in the position where one of your players, you know, you fly half your fullback, whoever's doing the kicking, and and hasn't mm. been able to convert right at the death. Is there an, ever an element of? Well, oh, shit, mate. That's you should have done it. I, I know, I know, it's not the rugby way, but is is there that feeling, or is it more? Never ever do you feel that it's that it's the kicker's fault. Nah, you never blame the kicker. No, if, no, if, no, if anything, you blame whoever scored the try. I, I can't remember who it was that scored, but they could have worked harder to get a little bit closer. I know they did. Yeah, he came in a bit, but you, um, that's the one where they they go over for it and they score it in the corner when they could have like ran it in twenty meters in. You know, so. mate, a kicker feels it more than any 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 player do you know what I mean so like I had, when did that happen to me we played uh, the Tasman Macos with uh, Hawks Bay Magpies EI West was our kicker missed like two or three shots would have taken us beyond them in the final and um, at the end of it man, the, the gut, like you could just see the emotion on the bloke but you just get you just get get around them do you know what I mean it's, it's done 
That's it. Talking about getting around thing. people, Max. What about big Willie Skelton? Uh, shielding. Yeah, you know, it, was, it was like the blind side. You've seen that where they crashed the yeah, car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where he puts his hand to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Was it Salman um, Murad, Jerry, the, the captain? Oh. Yeah. yeah, but wasn't it Jerry Collins with um, Colin Chavez? Hey, did he was it say? Anu Maga? It, my, um, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. One of the boys put, like, Colin Chavez got, got absolutely, like, his clock cleaned, and then uh, one of the boys was shielding him and put him in the uh, recovery position. I forgot who it was. I think it might have been um, Tana, but yeah. Um, that that's what that r- reminded me of. But yeah, that was so cool, wasn't it? Yeah, he's it's like a, he's like a big yeah. giant teddy bear, isn't he? Just looking after yeah. people. What a bloke! What a bloke! Good man. But um, in a, in any case, that that wasn't one that you guys called. Um, you you really didn't. You definitely didn't. Uh, Larishel. Yeah. Did you call it? I called, I called Larishel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. just still going. You're, you're quite good at this, but Ryan, on the other hand, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, no, 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 it's still murky. Yeah, Sarah's <laughs> border, for example. Oof. Uh, just to say, I mean, Lara Shard, So that's what three years. Well, they're into their third year. They still haven't lost a knockout game <laughs> in the Champions Cup. Um, to be fair, their last two knockouts, so the final last year and this round, they were down by 17 and 16 points, uh, respectively, coming back to win by one. Yeah, it, it takes more than just a great collection of players, right? To to have that mentality. And I think it, it, it ironically is quite a sort of that South African way that we saw at the World Cup where you're not necessarily the best side on on the day, maybe, but you just find those ways, find those ways to win. Boys, do we how much of that do we put to the Roger effect? And how much of that do we put the fact that, as you mentioned, Max, it's guys that have been there. They've some of them coming up from Pro Didu You've been there for so long at the club. Yeah, I think it's more that, isn't it? It's an accumulation of experiences. They've been there, done that. They know what it takes. They got the pedigree all over the park. I think when they when they get into those tight spots, they know what it what it takes to come out come out of those gunfights. I think I think it's more that than, than Rod. Obviously, Rod was probably firing rockets into him at half time because they were dysfunctional, weren't they? My God, they went up too much, and then yeah, and they got it done. But on a fucking not perdu. <laughs> I do uh, love it. <laughs> Curtin French is class, isn't it? With that accent it's just, just ripping off the they enunciation. Sh- they <laughs> didn't do it like advert for? Was it Guinness that he did an advert for? The, did you see that one recently? Uh, there yeah, was there a, was. It was about perfection or something. And uh, he's in giving a team talk to, I'm pretty sure it was Guinness. But yeah, it is fucking priceless, isn't it? Yeah, we should put the, uh, the the Irish accent against the uh, the the uh, sort of Wigan or the you know the Sean Edwards when he does it as well. Uh, he, they, they, they fucking are norm. <laughs> norm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, right, yeah. let's uh, let's move on to a result that maybe wasn't surprising, but but ultimately considering where Saracens normally are, that, that that was a that was a big win for Bordeaux at home. Well, especially the fact that they didn't get any points on the board until like what, sixty odd minutes or something. It was Man, they could not hold on to the ball, could nah. they? They couldn't get anything going on the breakdown. Like the counter rucking from Bordeaux was relentless. And how good is the atmosphere down there? Like the the oh, like, just it, the it was like mark. a football game, wasn't it? Like you could hear the fans yeah. chanting and like banging drums Have you- and have you played there? No, nah, I haven't. No, mate. The walk from the changing room to the <laughs> to the pitch is like twenty minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> they walk in for like ages. Oh, wow. It must be like it must be over hundred meters. I was like, "Are we there yet?" And then, like, when you have to go back, <laughs> when you have to go back to like change your boots or something quickly, it is wild. You're like, "Oh god, it's going to take a while to get back." Oh, that was so, stress. Like, Johnny Gray's going there. That will stress him out. He yeah, had the mate, sort of thing that would uh, that would play with him mentally. But yeah, um, given but the game, yeah, is is an awesome place, and also the sun, the sunsets there in Bordeaux are just glorious, like just the red and pink skies dripping on the backdrop, and because the stadium's not like a big sort of cavern, it's very much like this Art Deco like work of art. Um, you can sort of see it all. It's, it's I can just clever. imagine Pat in the review, right, and in Gan. 
Yeah, and I'm just Mate, staring off. What the fuck are you looking at me? And you're just like, oh, the sunset, Pat. Look, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> like, Guys. With, with the fucking Gryffindor helmet, just, I can see, yeah. I can fucking see it here. And you're just like, yeah, with that weird stare on it. Yeah, that gorgeous kind of look. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Hell of a mate. Oh, but yeah, we were saying earlier, Max, um, there's no way Quinn's go down there and do the job, is there? No, but yeah. No, the, the, it's, 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 it's getting, yeah. That back three, oh, good God, Bibavi. And Penno is pretty much Teflon right now. He's probably the best winger in the world. Are we saying that? Can we say we that? I, that think, I, I think, I mean, also he because he just it. seems to have just... Evolve. Keeps adding stuff to his game, yeah. buddy. Keeps doing weird things. Appears in strange places. It's like, yeah, it's it's odd. He's he's unbelievable. A lot bigger than he looks. Really good deft body control. He's just a magician, man. He's he's an absolute class act. And they didn't struggle with um without Jelly Baby. Like Jelly Bear wasn't even there, and they they got it they got it done, man. And, um, obviously Ben the Planet Tamafuna, strong game as always. Wait, did you play against him? No, no, no. I had, I had the, they, they kept him in the stables. I had, um, I had the Safa. He was also a remarkably large gentleman, but, um. I played against Be uh, Big Ben, uh, against Rassing and we actually play cammed him, uh, you know, like when you're doing your reviews and stuff like that. And he, he yeah, stand, he, would, he didn't leave, like, he stayed within like a 10 meter radius of the center spot, right? <laughs> right like the, yeah. the kicking games going on and like loads of the play. He's just got stood there in the mm. middle, just waiting for the next scrum. Can you imagine being that, like, cause he's, He's not the tallest man, but he's like the he one of the heaviest men in rugby right now. Yeah. It must be. It, it, that's like me running around with like 40 kilo plates on, like 220 <laughs> kilo plates. That's nutty, mate. Unbelievable athlete. Like, oh, yeah, but um, man, Bordeaux, just class. Class everywhere. I'm pretty yeah. sure the Tongans, they did some purple leaf uh, training when I, uh, trading when I went there as well. Like all the... He brought over a load of purple leaves for, I don't know where he'd gotten from, but he came to our hotel with it all for, for some of the Tongan boys that were injured. <laughs> the, old, <laughs> right. the old magic leaves, and he came in with it. Just wrapping yeah. Yeah. yeah, boys. Night before a game, offering offering purple leaves to some of the fellas. But he's a nice bloke. He's a, he's a, he is a lovely bloke, big Ben Tomofuna. But you're right, Max. I don't know how, Nick, I don't know also, how he gets Max Maxine Luku looks in, um, lads. I was thinking he really looked like someone. I was trying to figure it out. I was like, who Jason is this? Statham. Jason Statham. If he had a beard, <laughs> my God, he had some double. Right, here we fucking go. Right, right. yeah. Let's go. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? I couldn't believe him. He looks so much like Jason Statham. Yeah, he does. Unbelievable. Yeah. Right, next game. Come on, fucking let's go. <laughs> Probably. Drop that little, yeah, that that's... little hit. Right. Um, there was a well, Northampton versus Munster. Northampton mm. continuing okay. their form. It's hard to compete both in the Prem and the Champions Cup, but you know it seems that the squad that they've got, there aren't that many weaknesses. But there was some, I mean, some good play all around. Although, can I just mm. what, let's start with? Sorry, I wanted to talk about the the. the the winning try and George Hendy, who's not, I think he was playing in the championship with you last season. And did you see? Uh, no, last, no, he's around. He was around last season. Was he's, he? Mate, he's, yeah, he's a big, he's a big goose. He can, he can, he can rumble. Yeah, mate, he was class. Wasn't that him? was hell of a finish. You can see Crowley and Zebo are thinking he's going to come back inside. And he's like, nah, I fancy it. There's enough real estate for me to get down there. And he goes for it. Fair play to him. Hell of a finish. Some great shots. Well. Well. You down. just see people, like, when the camera's looking down, you just see him coming to school to try and just people, like, lying on the floor all behind him, just, like, in yeah. his weight. Just railing, yeah. Um, and then, obviously, finish that slight home break from the 22. That was that was tasty as well. Very Saints esque. They're, they're but, serious right. contenders, eh, Northampton? 100%. 100%. I uh, thought the pack was brilliant. Like Langdon, obviously having a strong game. Um, Manny Yogan, big scrummaging game against uh, Stephen Archer. Uh, mate, obviously Courtney Laws doing bits. Um, Sammy Graham's been class for them all year. I was glad to see Monster yeah. lose. <laughs> 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 they probably have injuries though. They have, they're missing a few men, aren't they? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure, yeah. But yeah, I thought, I thought, yeah. Saints just look look very, very good. It was, it was, it was, it was tight for a while as well, and they just came through it in the end. Pressure kind of 
pressure kind of told them. Do, and then, then Hendy came on. You, you say that they you 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 put them as you know they're up there with potentials mm. for for winning it, but you know how you look at can that North can the Saints can you see them beating La Rochelle or Bordeaux? Oh man, anything's possible once you get into that last bit. I reckon everyone's good. Everyone's on it. You, 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 you've earned your place. Do you know what I mean? You've been through the gauntlet. There's, there's, as long as people are fit and I think anything's possible in Europe. But it, it, the it, the, the yeah. three big French teams that you look at, Toulouse, La Rochelle and Bordeaux, that you think between those three, they've got some That's the difference. pretty good representation in there. Um, so it's fucking scary, the teams that they can put out. So, but just so you know, you're aware, so Northampton will be, will be, will be um, we'll be hosting the Bulls, but then the other quarterfinal is Leinster, La Rochelle. So you, you're, the, they are taking on, you know, they that semi final is is a tough, tough, tough one. Regardless, um, no quarterfinal. Yeah, that pro- no, sorry, it's Leinster, La Rochelle, and the quarterfinals, but they will play each other in the semi. Uh, Northampton uh, Saints yeah. Bulls, so they'll play each other yeah, in the yeah. finals. Uh, whereas the other half is um, Toulouse versus Exeter in the quarters, and then Bordeaux play. Bordeaux Begle, sorry, uh, against Harlequins, but those guys will face off. The winners of those of those rounds will um, will face off. Um, quick word on t- actually Toulouse uh, beating Racing. Did you see they uh, they cut out the, uh, the 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 actual transmission? I think the broadcast cut out um, probably because they're getting harmed. It's probably like a Racing director. That? Yeah, I did see that. That was that was sad. Um, and we had like Sam Lowell talking about everything, but um, I don't know. It wasn't the it wasn't the best game to watch, was it? Uh, you enjoy that? I, did, I didn't enjoy it so much. I thought it would be a little bit more Razzly, but um, good to see Blair uh, Kinghorn kicking. Blair Kinghorn, yeah, Dupont played played pretty well as always. Um, and Tamak back as well. That was that's good if you're of a French disposition. Good to see him. Um, mm-hmm. Good to see him. Uh, good to see him back. But uh, ultimately, that Toulouse side. Who? I mean, for, uh, do we think they are the side to beat? Toulouse. Yeah. Oh, I, don't know. I don't know. I think, but I kind of. I think. I think they can come unstuck. I think they're beatable. I think. Uh, I think Bordeaux potentially are, are are the team to beat in terms of how they're playing. Um, the firepower they got in the back back line. As long as that pack can sort of get them reliably, like go for a ball but but for the most part I think um, I think Bordeaux might be the team I always make the mistake of going and looking at like the top 14 but it's just completely different like all that goes out the window Bordeaux sixth at the moment La Rochelle fifth the top of the top 14 is actually Stade Francais um, and, they, and, and, you, and you watch them in the pool stages they were not very good exactly. it's so, so you look at that and you think how is that um, even yeah, it, even like with Leon down in twelfth at the moment. But um, yeah, between those three French teams, they've got something in there. I think they can do the job. All right, fabulous. I think we've kind of gone through it. And then there was a you both did call the Leicester Leicester. The Leicester did look all right, to be fair. In that, yeah, bit, yeah. Came back through it. I thought it was going to be an absolute blowout with that um that mental hat trick in like what was it twenty minutes or something? Yeah, clean off. Um, Gibson Park was just all over the gaff. Um, but yeah, uh, Leicester still gave a decent account of themselves, but that was always sort of going to be the way, wasn't it? Leicester just on flames. Yeah. And then the Bulls uh, absolutely hammering Lyon. We, 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 you guys did call that one very, mm-hmm. very clearly. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. All right. Wise. All right. Very wise. Mystic Meg, just wise. take it easy. Like, they would, as you said, they. Lyon have a lot of big players, you know, sucking straws out in, up in the altitude. So, um, you know, they, they, and and the Bulls have quite a lot of spring box, don't they, in their in their back line. So, uh, so yes, okay. With that in mind, fellas, let's call out the quarterfinals. Where do oh, we? Think? Here we bloody go! Here we bloody go! First things first, we've got Toulouse, Exeter Chiefs at, in Toulouse. Toulouse. Easy, Toulouse. Yeah? Mm-hmm. No doubt in my mind. Uh, there's a lot of no doubt in your mind last week, mate. So. 
No, but the last week was there was some tough games to be played last week. This 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 one is more distinctly advantageous to come on. Uh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. You guys are mm-hmm. the experts, uh, Max and Bordeaux Begler Harlequins in Bordeaux. You both sort of said it, but Peace, Bordeaux. 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 Bordeaux, yeah, Bordeaux. It's uh, well, to all our Harlequins fans who are listening. I am. Um, I'm sorry for that. Uh, Nan. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah, the they, they shouldn't be there like, anyway. They shouldn't be there anyway. And then we've got Leinster La Rochelle. <laughs> at, in, at the Aviva. At the Aviva. I assume, well, in, in, in Ireland, yeah. Oh. So they beat them. Uh, Leinster yeah. went there and beat them, didn't they? In the groups. Oh, that is tough. I'm, yeah, but I'm... in the groups, wasn't it during our buddy's? Um, wasn't it during his uh, sabbatical? Or I don't know, but I'm going Lara Shell. I'm going Lara Shell, boys. Are you? Yeah. Ooh. I hear the I hear the Leinster wheels have become gunky. Um, I'm going Lara Shell as well. Let's do it. That's Let's good. go. No, we haven't. And Saints hosting the Bulls. The Saints. That is going to be the. I think that's a really tough game. That's tight. Um, where's are, are Saints are hosting? At home, yeah. yeah, at the Saints. Oh mate, that was that was. Bull. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bulls. Really? Yeah, I just mate playing them as yeah. It was. We might have been really off that day. To be fair, but they were horrible. I reckon that they felt yeah they were mustard if they're on. I love, they, they some problems. I love that you guys have had a, you've had you've had nipples with all of these with with the big guys with Bordeaux yeah, yeah, with I've the balls. Yeah. You're like, oh, balls was just like, oh, God. Oh, here we go into the crucible. Every collision. <laughs> <laughs> too good, too good. Well, look, I think it's probably fair play to uh, to let Ryan who looks just dreadful. I mean, Boy, honestly, he, the Max. Hey, the video he looks I, I do look all right, don't I? The fact that, the fact that I've slept for all of that. He's had four yeah. barocas. They say do one. I think he's like he's like pissing I've uranium. Done, I, yeah. I, uh, I've done a fair few. Have you ever been to Hong Kong, Max? No, sadly, no. My brother lives there. Does he? Yeah, so should, should I connect you? Was he at the seventh yesterday? No, I don't think so. Um, oh man, I've, 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 well, I've met up with Mark's brother. I might as well meet up with your brother, <laughs> Max. Find out if he wants to go out on um, on Gareth's boat tomorrow. He's taking Ryan out. Get him out on the boat. They could do some content, like right, Matt, bro- dude. To give yeah. a shout, he'll, he'll, he'll honestly give him a shout. Um, how funny if Will's did like a bizarre like doppelganger mall or nothing. I mean, they're not. They don't really look like us, but that would be so good. It's so funny, brother. and I'm here with. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, Max, it's been, it's been hard work over here, mate. It's been hard work, but I'm looking forward to uh, like I, I'm looking forward to a good like night's kip, and then back on the horse tomorrow. Woof. And as per always, just want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to the legends that are our sponsors, Wolf Craig Distillers. I was uh, I caught up with Greg Laidlaw. He's been out here. Uh, in Hong Kong doing some stuff he's obviously over in Japan at the moment with NTT so he came over to do some stuff but another good Wolf Craig ambassador here representing us Scots at the Seven so it was good to see him but if you want to head over to the website which is wolfcraig.com wolfcraig.com you can grab yourself a beautiful bottle of whiskey or one of their wonderful gins so jump over there and make sure you give them a little follow and a like sadly that is all the time we've got left for this week Huge thank you to Ryan for staying up till 1 a.m. in Hong Kong. Thank you to Max for... Cheers, Ryan. For... I'm sorry. For... I'm sorry. <laughs> tardiness. Thank you for coming. It's my incredible tardiness. My profound tardiness. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. <laughs> also, Max, to be fair, we gave all of the dates and timings. I'm in France skiing. Ryan is in Hong Kong. We gave only the times in the UK. Those were the only times we gave. And so my bet was, I was like, I he will thought, turn thought, up. Thought, I, he will turn up one hour late and just log in and be like, oh, "I thought it was five. That's what I thought was going to happen." Until you phoned me, and basically, no, 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 no
Why did I think it was tomorrow? <laughs> Wait, it's, hey, to be fair to you, it's tomorrow for me. I'm in tomorrow. Yeah. I am in tomorrow. <laughs> You're behind me. It's Tuesday, yeah? You're on Monday. Mm. That's mm. fucking... It's weird, eh? That's weird, hey, how that works. I'm. It, it's mm. Tuesday here. Yeah? Isn't that weird? How, that, how's Tuesday in Hong Kong, mate? It's all right. It's all right. It's uh, <laughs> not too bad. Um, Max, I've, I've just been for a lovely bit of dinner as well. Oh, you would. Yeah, you have? What'd you have? What'd you go, go and check out on the gram. I had some uh, spicy pork wontons, little um, some dumplings. These little handmade dumplings. Oh my god, they were incredible. Um, oh some god. pork and something bao bun, like ste- uh, steamed yeah. dumpling, uh, like a bao bun type thing. Like a char siu. Oh my god, it was it was ridiculous. What was it called? The place? It was called. Um, your Just brother actually recommended. Um, hold on. No, oh, Gareth recommended it, did he? Yeah. And uh, me and Bart tried to go there the other day. It was called Din Tai Fung. Din Tai Fung, mate. Din Tai Fung. It's a Thai winnie. It's, it's, it's awesome. They've got one in uh, Covent Garden. Uh, they've opened a new one. Mate, mate, so do you want to know an interesting fact about that tiny little dumpling where when it explodes and the sauce explodes in your mouth? Well, not that that's the point. Let's, we don't, we, let's fast forward from that. Um, six months. So I've, I've back in an old job doing a travel show we went and filmed the headquarters there and they spent each person who works at Din Tai Fung in the restaurant spent six months just doing the folds I think there were 38 folds per uh individual uh jow- uh, per right. individual uh, you don't want to be that guy mate they, the match, six they give you they, give, they don't just give you a menu they bring out a little sheet and it's how to eat them and so you pick it up and they say taste it before you mix it they give you a little ginger some uh, vinegar soy sauce and you make up your little oh but they say put it on your spoon pierce it so the the sauce comes out of it and then taste it and then then you add to it oh mate they were so oh God, good I'm so hungry now mate, see how long bow they are the they are the bomb they are the bomb but wait, hey, mate, take some photos though, right, tomorrow from the uh, the seafood place. It's uh, it's awesome. Uh, and the lad who runs it's really, really nice. So um, have a great day. Have a great day with our brothers, potentially, Wills. Um, and, I'm miss you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, thank you to everyone for listening. And we will see you all next week. Love you, boys. Peace. Bye, guys. More or nothing.